Hi everyone, how are you? I hope you guys are all surviving through the uh, current unique circumstances we find ourselves in with the shelter in place order and how we're all trying to function and take care of our families. I hope first and foremost that you are taking care of your families and yourselves. Wash your hands frequently, be prudent, um, try to avoid contact with lots of people and practice the social distancing. I do feel it's important that we try to get this virus under control and I think the edicts coming from the government are important. As a quasi joke, when I think of March Madness, I think of the NCAA tournament and the brackets. I don't think of what's going on now, but it sure feels like March Madness with how the world is reacting to this coronavirus. It's really a, an incredible time to watch uh, world events. So uh, for this a brief video we're going to do, and I, if I talk too much, I'm sorry in advance. I hope it'll be brief. I want to do our normal market overview, and then I want to talk to you about what we're seeing and what I'm seeing in the marketplace. So. Uh, I'm going to be brief on the numbers instead of specific. If you, I mean, I'm not going to go too far into it. If you want the numbers from market uh, pendings and actives, let me know and I can email that to you. But in Oakland, last week before the crisis hit, we were at about 205 houses for sale. Last night, we were at 182. So I don't see new stuff coming on. I see stuff coming off and uh, inventory again falling. Total inventory in the city is 254, which 60 are condos. Berkeley, that's gone up. It was like 37 about two weeks ago, now it's 50. Important, 15 of them are condos. That's a lot of condo inventory for Berkeley. You don't normally see that. Uh, detached, there's 34 homes for sale. Berkeley, I'm gonna mention the prices because it's so startling to me. Uh, Berkeley detached, average listed price is 1,740,000. Median price is a million three seventy two. Um, average price of the whole market in Berkeley active is a million four thirty four, and median is a million eighty seven. Emeryville has eighteen properties for sale. Eleven are condo, five are detached. Sort of in the range of what's normal for them. Um, Albany has now eleven total properties. Three are condo, eight are detached. Um, Albany has a little bit of inventory. We've seen it with one, two, and three for the first two months of the year. So to have 11 properties in Albany is, is, is an is a increase. And then El Cerrito, again, it seems like our tightest market pretty consistently. There's only 10 properties for sale in El Cerrito. One's a condo and nine are detached. The average list price in, M in El Cerrito today is 1,061,000 and the median is 875 of, of detached homes. Uh, the one condo is the same one that's been on the market at that uh, exit 29 or up there on um, in El Cerrito, the townhomes. And those are very nice townhomes. I strongly recommend if you have buyers looking in the market that don't want to compete, they can buy those at list, um, maybe negotiate some closing cost credits for washer dryers. Um, I think it's a nice project. I don't know the builder very well, but the project's nice. So that's, that's what's going on that's active. Oh, let me hit the pendings too. Um, Okay, so pending in Oakland is 220 homes. So would tell me that there's one month supply of houses. Total pending deals in Oakland are 294. In Berkeley, uh, total pending are 41. Nine are condo, 31 are detached. So you almost have one month supply on the detached. Uh, the pending detached prices are 1,191,000 and 1,050,000 for average and median, which also tells you that the lower priced homes are what's selling, not the higher priced homes. Emeryville has 12 pending deals, 10 are condos, one's a house. Albany has 11 pending deals, five are condos, and six are homes. And El Cerrito has 18 pending deals, three are condos, two of which in that 29 Palm project up there, and 15 are detached homes. So uh, again, a month's supply is what's on the market. All right, so what do I see happening? I'm getting a lot of calls from agents that are not part of our company asking me what they should do with regards to uh, listing properties now and, and taking offers and, and, and handling their business. And what I tell all of them is you can't predict the future. Nobody can. Um, if you don't do something, you're at no. The answer is no, you're not going to get anywhere. If you try something, you get to maybe and maybe can get you to a yes. So if you have a property that is staged and ready to go, I would say you go to market and you go to market like normal. If you are anticipating multiple bids, you price to generate the bids. Buyers are still out there. If you're not staged, it's possible you won't be allowed to stage based on the shelter in place order. So in that case, you gotta wait till that gets lifted. I would not put a property on the market that's in a nice neighborhood in, you know, where you're looking for that 
you know, auction bid sales process that isn't staged. So don't take a chance on throwing it out there on stage just to see what happens. I would suggest that you stage it. If you're in a rougher area or an area where things are selling FHA pretty quickly, then maybe you don't need to stage and you can put it on the market. Um, so so I, that, that's what I think is and what I've been advising people on when I, when I talk to them about what to do with the properties. Um, deals are still getting done. Uh, 2008 Maple got seven offers. Uh, Best, I think, had four or five offers in San Leandro. Uh, there are three offers coming in on this Helen Street condo today. We're writing one of them. Maybe we're writing two of them. Um, so activity, I, I still see, is strong. Anna Belomo sold her deal on Cowper in four days. That's impressive. So buyers are out. There are no open houses. There are no broker tours. We really need to follow the example of that. If you're going to meet somebody to show them a house, less than 10 people, please. So like you and maybe the buyer and seller, I mean the, the husband and wife or the couple that's going to look at it and you meet them at the site, do not put them in your car, do not drive with them and practice social distancing. Unlock the front door, make sure the alarm's off, turn on a few lights and step aside and let them in. Make sure you maintain that social distancing. Um, I think that's how people are gonna be doing the physical showings. I don't even know if you're allowed to do that, but that's what I think is gonna happen. Um, certainly, as I said a moment ago, broker tours and open houses, uh, we should avoid doing to, to conform with needed public policy. Um, a lot of virtual tours and video. So when you have a listing, best to get a Matterport tour done and a video done. If you get a video done, Brian will make a commercial for you on YouTube, which we're paying for, and we will have YouTube ads with your homes on them. That's something not every broker does and you can tell your clients are going to do that. Uh, Open Homes Photography has said they will not shoot homes. They may change, I don't know. We have a different guy who's been chasing us for two years to do business. His name is Brandon, he's from the peninsula. He's Ariel Canvas, and he has found a solution to being able to do this. And what he says is, you set a combo lockbox, you turn on all the lights, and you leave. And then he comes and shoots, he will not touch the lights, he will walk in, shoot the house, do whatever you want, and then leave, he'll lock it, put the key back in the combo, and then you have to go and turn off the lights and secure the house again. So that's his method of trying to do a workaround. It is in strict violation of the shelter in place rules, but he's trying to run a business, and I understand that. So he's trying to find a way where he can impact people the least. Last thing, and I'm sure there's other things that you might have questions on, and certainly you could email me questions and I will try to respond to them. Um, help those that can't get out. Um, if you have clients that are elderly, call them, email them, text them, do they need some groceries? Uh, small things like that I think can really help people. Go out and go for a walk. You're allowed to do that. Um, it's considered essential to be able to drive to exercise, which I think is great. I ran Lake Merritt on Tuesday and people were out. Just practice the social distancing, but don't get cabin fever and don't feel trapped. Uh, try to get out and, and, and enjoy our, our wonderful area. We've had a couple of days where the blue skies were nice and it's crisp. So get up, take care of yourselves, get some exercise, stay fresh, you know, read, stay educated. Um, oh, and one other thing about the mortgage market, uh, this is something that's important. So interest rates dropped like two weeks ago, three weeks ago to 3%. And there was a surge of refi applications, which locked up the banking system. They couldn't handle it. So they raised the rates to stem the tide of new apps. Now a new aspect has come in where the investors that are buying the mortgages don't have capital to buy because of the market crash. So nobody can buy the mortgage. So the first mortgages that they're cutting are what they call QM, which is people like me that are self-employed, have LLCs and corporations, and we get sort of like this Alt-A product where we can get a loan without having to follow Fannie and Freddie guidelines. Those loans are gone, it's about 15% of the market. It just locked up, it literally disappeared in 10 days. During the 2008 crisis, it took almost 10 months for those loans to disappear. This disappeared in 10 days. Fannie and Freddie are still buying mortgages, they're funded by the government, so your traditional loans are gonna be okay, your portfolio loans are gonna be okay because those banks will be making them. But the ones that are bought by investors, make sure you check that and uh, you understand that that, is, that has changed. It'll come back, but right now it's changed. Okay, that's it. Um, I wish you all a, a great week, a great month. And uh, if you need anything, email, call, or text. Uh, we're here to help. Uh, oh, and for the admin team, thank you for everything you're doing. I know it's been very challenging to be working from home. 
I, I appreciate it. Please know we were going to take care of everything and uh, we will get through this and be, and be a tight ship yet again. All right. Thank you.